Welcome to Talking Tuesday. I am your host, Fancy Quant, and today we are going to talk about the Princeton FinTech Quant Conference here. I believe it was just like the Princeton Quant Trading Conference, and then they kind of changed the name, and now it's FinTech and Quant Conference. Anyways, the Princeton FinTech Quant Conference was absolutely amazing. I had a blast. Um, so I go to schools occasionally, a few times a year. I do presentations. I do a PowerPoint on some sort of topic. Um, and you talk to students and I've done like virtual ones, which again are like some are really good, but most of them are kind of lackluster. And the reason for that is because I just, it's like me giving a presentation and a few people like asking questions and I'm done, right? There's really nothing to it. So Princeton, I was a little more excited for, I've never been to Princeton, right? Ivy League school. Uh, now the Princeton conference as well as a bunch of schools they invite from like the Northeast, all these quant finance masters. Uh, and there are other students with like PhDs from pure math. And there was like a, you know, molecular biology PhD. And I ran into an economics PhD and there's all kinds of cool people there. So it's not just like one class and one specific thing. And more importantly, it's not just me giving a quick presentation. It is a conference. Uh, it was set up, I believe there's like three, there's like sign in in the morning. There's a keynote speaker. And it was like two or three sessions, lunch, and then like another three sessions at the end. And then all the speakers got together and had dinner that night. Now, the reason it was just so great, um, I planned on going to a bunch of the presentations. So I went to the keynote speaker, which was awesome. Uh, so that was a really good one. Is on hedge funds and investing and setting up firms and the challenges behind it and why it's not as easy as you think it is. Um, it was great. I really enjoyed it. It's probably one of the best ones. I'd say it's the best one. Um, and then I went to, ran into some students and I went to one of the other presentations and then the rest of the day, I just didn't have time because I had so many students like coming up to me asking if they could get a picture, if they could ask questions, they can talk about their careers. It was just really enjoyable to actually be there. It was like a live YouTube session for like a whole day. And it was great too. I walked up to the building in the morning. I was kind of lost. I didn't know where I'm going. And somebody yells out my name from behind me. And of course, you know, I turn around and it's a subscriber and they're like, Hey, Dimitri, like, How's it going? I'm one of your subscribers. And they brought a bunch of people with them. And then we went to the building. And that was a blast because uh, students wanting to know uh, what schools we all went to. <laughs> like I thought it was great. Somebody thought I was a student. Uh, it makes me feel young again because I know I'm getting older now. Uh, but it was great. And the best part, I think, for students was the fact that you got to interact with all of the speakers afterwards if you wanted to. So... I will recommend this is probably a great conference to attend. I believe there's going to be another version of it in Chicago in the fall. If you're willing to talk to other people. Now I say that because I am not the friendliest person and people don't realize this. Like they talk to me, ask questions and it's great and it's wonderful. Um, but I was the student that would like go to events or conferences and like, you know, I just kind of sit on the sides, listen to the speakers and I'm like, it's kind of a waste of time. But if you're actually going to talk to the other students and ask like what schools they're from, what are they studying, what are their plans, I think it's a great opportunity to network. And I never realized this when I was a student, but now that I'm older and like I'm hiring, I'm like, oh, I wish I knew more people that graduated the years I graduated because they would also have nine years of experience now. And the students I did graduate with that I do know, they all work in kind of different areas. So it's like, even though I really need someone to fill a specific job, like over the years, like I'm like, oh, our company's hiring, our firm's hiring, or someone's hiring for a position. I've just haven't known the right people for that. And I think if I would have networked more, it would have made my job easier for hiring. But also imagine you as someone looking for a job, it's easier too as well, because now you're like, oh, all my friends are hiring and now they're managing directors or directors of departments. And it's easy to kind of jump around and build a more solid career and get different types of experience here. So if you're going to go, you're going to meet other students and do that. The lunch was awesome as well. Like there were giant round tables and lots of people got to chat and talk to each other from different programs. I met students from a variety of different programs as well. Um, I dropped the bomb that, you know, I... <laughs> Financial engineering and derivative products no longer exists. And they were like shocked. I'm like, oh, no, 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 it exists. Like, it exists. Uh, there just aren't as many jobs as there once were. And so it's much harder to get a job actually doing financial engineering where like risk management is booming and there's a ton of jobs on that side. And even just like traditional buy side, like hedge funds, prop funds, uh, wealth management. Like there's a lot of jobs in these other areas compared to um, option pricing and derivatives. But it was great. I had a lot of fun time with that as well. Um, so overall, 
student quality was amazing. I met a lot of just really interesting students from different backgrounds. And I talked to a few PhDs in pure math. And that like really excited me because I don't get to talk quant finance with people very often. And like people are like, oh, no, 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 you talk about it on YouTube. It's like, yeah, I kind of do. But I don't really get to sit down and like just chat about quant finance or just math. And so a student was talking about some questions. They were interested in getting into the field. Of course, you know, being a PhD in math, you're not really super familiar with uh, quant finance. And one of them had done a bunch of research. And I was like, yeah, I've been looking for a book on ergodic theory. Um, and they're like, oh, I've done some research on that. This is like the best book. You should get this book. So I'm like, all right, awesome. Add me on LinkedIn. Send me the book for as a reference. Uh, this is like a personal interest of mine, this area. This ties into stationarity. If many of you know, I love stationarity and time series. Uh, but yeah, so I had a great time just talking math stats. Another student came up and asked a question about a project. And of course, you know, I've got, I'm like, do you have pen and paper? I feel like I'm, I don't know, broken. I don't have my pen and paper. And they're like, oh, of course. And then of course, I'm like explaining things and I'm writing it out on the paper and drawing stuff. And that was an absolute blast as well, because I love to teach when I can, someone has an actual question on an actual problem. And then I can like, draw and teach and you know anyone that's worked with me knows I, I don't function well unless I can draw so a lot of you have noticed uh the last few episodes here on the YouTube channel have been pretty good at least in my opinion uh, and I think a lot of you have liked it too but it's because I have the the pen pad and I can like write on the screen and draw charts and math and do stuff so Again, that was fun. That was amazing. It was great as well. A lot of people had questions about internships and job opportunities and which way they wanted to go and things they really enjoy, but they're not sure which way to go. It was great. There's just a lot of really good conversations. And the organizers of the Princeton event also mentioned the whole purpose of this is so everyone can like talk and chat on like a casual setting. And I think they hit it spot on. Like I had just really good downtime with students. It rotated a lot too. Like students were off on their own presentations. And so I would talk to like these five or 10 students that were just there. And then they had, you know, other talks and lunch and things they wanted to, and they would just leave. And then I'm starting to head out to lunch and all of a sudden two or three more students kind of stop and chat. And everyone I think got more or less like opportunities and time to chat with me. I liked having the diversity in students here. So talking to computer science masters, undergrads, PhDs, pure math, like it just bounced all over. So that was just, that was great. Like this was for me the most rewarding thing because it was just nice to spend time with the students and help students and talk about quant finance and industry as a whole. And then on top of that, um, there was a dinner on Friday night, but I didn't go to it because I couldn't get in in time. So I flew from Dallas um, to uh, Newark and then drove down to Princeton on Friday night. And then I did the whole event on Saturday. And then I did a dinner afterwards with the speakers and that got over late. And then I drove back up to my hotel, um, had issues with the hotel and had to go to a different hotel and finally went to bed like it, I think it was like 1230 at night, got up like 430 and flew out uh, back to Dallas on Sunday. So it was crazy hectic, but the dinners afterward was great. It was the speakers and the organizers of the event. So a big shout out to the student that invited me. Uh, they went to Boston University. It was just really nice to get invited, which was fun. And then I got to have dinner with them and chat with them. And then there's a few other people as well that were speakers um, and other organizers. And it was like a really nice casual dinner in the sense that like we were all just chatting and then it segued into just fun topics like education in the U.S. versus education abroad uh, versus hiring practices and issues with the industry and why, you know, academics are getting not paid that much. Um, so we talked about that. And it was just like this nice, like the topics you guys like that I create on the podcast, like the one why banks are failing. It was like that, but everybody could be very open and just discussing things because no one's judging us and it's not recorded here. So it was really nice just to have a relaxed conversation. I don't get to have those very often, especially when it comes to like political or like touchy topics and you know hiring practices and educational systems and those sort of things. So that was a blast as well. Overall, if you're a student and you're looking to go, I would highly recommend it. Again, as long as you're willing to kind of network and talk with other students. Also, it's a great time to connect and network. I was shocked, shocked, uh, that the other speakers were like actually really willing to connect and talk to students as well. So often I go to these events and it's like me asking questions and like talking to students and having, you know, providing advice and all that. And then the other speakers usually like get in, do their thing, and then they get out and they just leave. Uh, 
this was not how it was. There were many of them that were like staying and handing out their email addresses and answering questions. And like, they were kind of like me in the sense we were just standing around and people are just kind of coming up to them and asking questions. So it was a great time to ask like career questions. Um, again, there were other people that were like front office and other kinds of areas, buy side and all that. They would have been, you know, provided good advice on those areas that I don't work in as much. So I think it was good to get different perspectives for students as well. And then finally, my topic. So I talked about uh, unintended bias detection and models. So I think my bias is detected based off of a mathematical principle. It's not an opinion. Um, this apparently goes against the industry, as I found out recently. Uh, but it was an interesting topic. I also enjoyed the fact there was a line of students waiting outside the door before I got there. And I'll put a picture on here as well. But there was like standing room only, like people filled all the seats. There were people standing in the back. Um, a lot of people I think found the talk helpful and interesting. I try to balance uh, some maths and stats, you know, uh, with like actual application and theory and try to give real world examples. Um, I know the super technical topics are really boring because it's like I don't fully grasp it or it's not enough time to explain the details. And so I don't like those ones. And I also don't like the ones that are like really high pie in the sky, like, oh, this is how the industry kind of works. And I'm going to wave my hands and we're going to do some stuff. So I try to do a balance. I think it turned out well. Again, I got a lot of positive feedback from students. So I think that went well. But overall, it was a blast. If you're looking to go to these conferences, I think there's another one in Chicago, uh, I think downtown uh, coming in the fall. Maybe I'll announce it if it's coming up and I kind of reach out to the organizer of these, of these sorts of events. But I would highly recommend if you guys are in the Northeast next year to go. There was 400 students or attendees this year. So that is huge. Uh I mean, when I go to speak normally, it's like a class of like 30 to 100. This was 400 people that attended. Uh, there are different tracks, different topics. Uh, I think high frequency trading, portfolio optimization was covered. Mine was machine learning biases. Somebody else had one on machine learning issues and biases, I think, as well. Um, there's one on structuring hedge funds and why they moved into data and all that. So super, super worth it. Really excited. For those of you that came, a huge thank you. You guys made this a lot of fun. Um, I look forward to hopefully doing another one of these in the future. I don't know if I'll do them every year, um, but doing these was a lot of fun. And I learned a lot from the practitioners as well, talking to them at dinner and whatnot, talking to them about their presentations. And then of course, the students always have amazing, interesting questions that I just don't think about. So a big thank you for that as well. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.